Hi there, I'm Siggy. Welcome to the first impressions of the Brooks Hyperion Elite 4 here on go for one The Hyperion Elite 4 was released on February 1st and it's the all-new 2024 version of Brooks' lightweight Elite shoe. From the first glimpse I do have a bit my doubts or let's say concerns, but let's start exploring and see what the shoe is all about. Currently it's only available in one colorway. It's not bad, but it's not great either. For me, Brooks could have given it a bit more fire, but who knows, future colorways might be more lit. What immediately stands out is that the upper is very thin, but I imagine that's how they try to save some weight. The front base is a bit wider, but the heel area is slim and sleek. They come in at 250 grams for my size 46. Another first thought was that the midsole foam stack in the heel would be around 40 millimeters, and surprise, surprise, they are 40 millimeters in the back and 32 millimeters in the forefoot, resulting in an 8 millimeter drop, which is a stack height to my liking in a ratio. In some shoes, I find that gives a better overall heel to toe experience. The midsole consists of a nitrogen infused DNA flash V2 foam. It's not Brooks's softest foam, but they claim it's their lightest and built for speed. Curious to put that to the test. Yeah, baby. It also features a 3D printed Speedvolt plus carbon plate and a rapid wall geometry in combination with that 8mm drop that gives me high expectations. There also seems to be a good amount of rubber at the outsole, but will it be enough to protect the exposed midsole? And also, will it be doable? Hmm. I'm expecting the exposed midsole to get some beating, especially once you get tired during your marathon and your stride is changing, because this usually is when you start to shuffle a bit with your feet. Furthermore, the stability in the heel area will be interesting to see what that will be all about since the shoe is so slim and sleek. That brings us to the highly ventilated and light upper. It reminds me of what my grandma used to knit. Ah, uh, the memories. It has a single layer almost throughout. There are here and there some areas with some reinforcements. For instance, in the forefoot to protect the toes, the rubber outsole comes a little bit up to the front. Then there is a thicker upper lining that reinforces a couple of centimeters for any possible bumps to the front of your foot. And if you look closely a bit more towards the sides to the midfoot, there is a kind of plastic tape to avoid the upper from possibly tearing, which is a nice addition to hopefully give some extra durability. The heel area, big question mark for me. It has a bit of padding, which is comparable with like a Nike Vaporfly, and with that I mean it's not much. The far back is reinforced. The sides itself are as flimsy as can get. Also at the top of the shoe at the pulling tab, same thing, different area. The laces definitely remind me of the Vaporfly, can't be any more clear than that. For me personally, don't like laces like this. They don't offer any stretch and their structure also doesn't feel great. If I would need to do the runner snap, then I'm guessing they would end up a bit short. So I'm already crossing my fingers for that. The tongue is also a bit of a head scratcher for me. I'm a bit wondering if I can call it a semi gusseted tongue or not. It's on one side attached to the upper, right next to the laces, so it will remain in place more or less. But okay, I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt for the moment. Don't see why this would go wrong, so hey, don't blame me if I'm not right. Now I'm done talking about them, it's time for some action. Time to go for a one.
first one in the books Hyperion Elite 4 completed. First of all, the midsole foam. In the beginning, I found that it was a bit tough, but after two kilometers, that went away and they were smooth. No problems there. The upper itself, stretchy, roomy. Yep, really nice. Laces, to my surprise, didn't have an issue with the laces. Also, positive point, even though they don't got a stretch, they stay locked. Good. The tongue itself, I don't think it's pretty much centered all the way, but didn't have any issues with that. The real issue that I had was in the heel. Apparently, I got a bit of a heel slip, and especially when I pick up the pace. In the beginning, I didn't notice it really much, but once I picked up the pace towards 15, 16 kilometers an hour, I started to feel it. I was getting a blister. I stopped in total three times, two times to adjust it, to see, okay, can I avoid this? Can I tighten it a little bit more? And I thought, okay, yeah, I'm fine. But then the last time at 13K, it was game over. Then I said, okay, let's try the heel not matted. So for the moment, I've got the heel not matted on both shoes. It's only the left foot that is hurting. The right foot is still okay, but I don't want to take any risks. So I did them both now. That felt a little bit better, but yeah, okay, the blister is there. It's open, so it's already too late. So I got to test it out further. Furthermore, picking up the pace in these babies, really 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 good up until 16 kilometers an hour the legs could follow the heart rate couldn't Meh. okay that's just condition i really want to try them out further but first i need to make sure that uh, my heel is a uh, perfect condition again so let's see but the full review will cover all those things and if you liked this video do not forget to like and subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell if you don't want to miss the full review which is coming really soon and i thank you all for watching and i see you hopefully all in the next one